Kojo Forex, a Ghanaian Forex millionaire, has talked about his Forex journey from 2012 when he started trading. Kojo has also talked about achieving everything that he ever wanted from Forex trading. He also talked about why he moved back to Ghana after going to Dubai and buying an apartment. He was speaking live on Instagram on the morning of January 15, 20. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Pretty, pretty inspiring. Pretty inspiring. Pretty inspiring. So, um, <laughs> somebody say my goal is to see a goal. <coughs> Never met anyone who wrote how to achieve their goals. Of course, you have to. You have to not just write the goals and then that's it you have to write how to achieve it if you don't know how to achieve it it's just wishful thinking you have to be detailed and give a detailed plan how am i going to achieve it you know and that's that's part of the reasons i want to buy this chair right could you eat a lot of a lot of free so hey why are they what are they saying i don't know what is going on here what is going on in my in my in my messages could you why is it important to write it down? Grab print one one one. This is your last time. Let me just block and remove this motherfucker from my account agenda account people. <laughs> Travel situation waiting for you. <laughs> I think Zanzibar is for the Z. Dr. Bill, that guy is something else. Dash out like he is dashing out. Hey, what are you guys talking about? I'm just lost. Hmm? What kind of people are asking stupid questions here? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I said Allah because I thought he was speaking English. I was reading everything in English, you know. You know how we do it. Then I realized that now he's actually, you know, my father is a policeman, so they used to give him all these police cocktails that I used to live in. It's like a single room, nothing really in there, nothing to write home about. But I wanted to leave that place. So initially, my goal was to just like trade <coughs> and be able to save some money. And, and rent my own place that was like my goal like this was 2016 2017 everything i thought about about forex was god please let forex give me some five thousand three thousand most times single room self contain was was about three thousand four thousand you know in ghana i cry here not necessarily any flamboyant house but just a regular room for a young man starting life that's what that's the difference that most people don't get i don't really i did not really like start like even though i always aimed high i did not start from zero to hundred real quick it progressed so i prayed and worked hard and i'll be trading and scalping the small account hundred dollar ten dollar twenty dollar fifty dollar one fifty two hundred dollar then eventually i had money to rent my first place i was so grateful like this and the second one was to be able to uh, accumulate some money to buy a few stuff in those rooms right which is like my tv and then the bed and the couch and all those basic things fridge in fact i did not even buy a fridge when i was in uni i had a fridge so that fridge was still functioning i had given it to a friend but i had to go and take it back you know how you're starting life <laughs> i took that fridge back from that friend I, bro i rented my house so i need to put fridge in my room so i went to take the fridge back <laughs> as simple as that you know, but I was very grateful that hey, Forex has been able to let me rent a, a single room with myself alone, and then now, like, I don't need um, to wake up in somebody else's room. I can sleep thousand hours if I want. 
the next one but before the room anyway obviously it was to just be self-subsistent so that i don't have to be calling my dad for money for money like i'm broke i'm calling your sisters and aunties and texting everybody you know that can you support me and, and your friends disturbing them like always be a border and then a burden you know a nuisance to you so so many people are nuisance to their friends you text your friends they don't pick because you're a nuisance they know they know their message already you know you don't even have to open your mouth before they, they figure out what you're coming some people have their message um bookmarked and then um how do they call that thing <coughs> archived archived by their friends from like you know one year two years ago and they, and then those people are not doing anything to change it because the moment you text them they know that you are in trouble you need money you're hungry you're broke bro you cannot keep up with this life so first things first i never wanted to like keep asking friends that i'm broke i need money i wanted a secure thing then i came to the apartment like uh, the room that i told you and the next one was like i was always taking you know public transport public transport trotro in nigeria you call it downfall right i was like god i don't want to be taking downfall again i don't want to be taking trotro again you know big women are squeezing you in the middle people are sweating you know you are in a haste to get somewhere people will be stopping on the road the drivers will just park somewhere and be loading and then just calling passengers from here but you are in a hurry like you need to get to this place so fast and then like they are just and then you thought driver driver to a to kane driver quick and be like ah masa mi ye juma o masa fioko o ni mi se mi ye juma mi ye sils no when you don't understand what i mean let me translate it like the drivers will literally park somewhere and then they are they are like they are like you know calling other passengers and you're telling the driver that driver let's go let's go we've been standing here for so long and the driver will shout back at you like my brother if you if you if you want to go get out and walk i'm working i need money don't come and disturb me you know I passed through all those things, so I'm like, God, please let me be able to stop taking, you know, trotro, which is public transport. But when I graduated from public transport, then I then I started taking Uber. Then Uber had just come; it hadn't been so long, you know. <coughs> but Uber was expensive, you know. Uber was like, like another class of, of. You know it all together like take uber like you like you're taking like you know a vip even so dates uber is like vip you know so like now i have an apartment and then i only take uber you know and my friends used to regard me hey charlie could you you know they take trotro only uber and you guys may know my nicknames like that my old nickname that my friends is called Sisoko. So this is so cool, you know they pick Trotro. He shown the pick Trotro, you know be today. It's to be like a flex among my friends that hey this guy does not pick public transport oh, hey, only Uber. It's like long time ago, long time ago. But all during the Uber time, then my next prayer is God, please give me money to to buy, you know, at least my first car through trading just at least my first car to trade it then i started praying i started working just aiming high praying working saving aiming praying working saving then i had money then i went to buy then i went to buy my dodge caliber ha ah, i was on top of the world you cannot imagine the gratitude the happiness the excitement <coughs> you know that 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 came with owning that car yeah, that car was my baby so you see that eventually i had solved so many of like my basic goals like in a progressive way that you wanted me to tell you from trading like this one took a couple of years to a couple of months to years you know just few though but i just kept they were not in huge humongous thing but i was comfortable i was really matching up you know to society so you couldn't like look down on me neither would you rate me anyway but i was just like in the midst doing well progressing because i'm living in my own room with my own small tv here and there then i have my own car now i don't you know just go out to eat a few times come back home i have some few foods in my fridge all those you know and that's like one of the most 
beautiful moments of any trader's life when you're a beginner trader like that's where you begin to see that this vision is really real this thing can take me far you know when you when you are finally moved from your parents house and you are you are now in you you know you escape responsibility like you escape be, uh, like um, being taken care of and now you assume responsibility like you assume responsibility that wow now i have to pay bills now i have to think about what i'll eat now i have to like think about my next rent renewal and all those type of things like ah oh, god you are becoming a man you know you know sleep bro good you go get to sleep you look so tired i'm i'm in i'm in my house and you're telling me why right, tomorrow am i going to work i can sleep anytime that i want <laughs> Don't get so worried, bro. You know, some some of you worry for no reason. You know, like imagine somebody who has AC on, who has big bed, who has like ambience everywhere, who has his beautiful wife sleeping there. You are worried about the person's sleep. Jesus Christ, you know. Don't be worried for no reason. Anyway, let me continue. <laughs> but. But then, but then, right, um, having that, having that car and then like rented place was suiting until it started down. Like the, the next one was the fact that the car was giving me problem at the point because it was a cheap car, you know, my electrician, my car uh, mechanic. I think you guys, people that followed me in 2017 would know his name, Mr. Evans. I'm always right to, hey, Mr. Evans is spending my money, Mr. Evans, Mr. Evans, Mr. Evans. <laughs> Small time, this thing, the gasket, ah, shit. This gasket is bent. This thing, he made me even understand and know all the car parts because he's always taking my small, small money. And I'm like, hey, God, please let me buy a proper car. So that Mr. Evans would not be worried about gasket, fan belt, uh, coolant, heater, this, this, that, every day. Please, God, let me buy a proper car. You know, at that point, I did not even know that some cars, some cars, you don't have to put water in them every morning because I have to wake up every morning, open my bonnet, go and measure the, the, the car gauge and be like, oh, okay, there's oil inside and then check the water level, okay? Because if you don't do that and you drive, you're going to get overheating. Oh, Jesus Christ. I never knew that there are some cars that you don't even have to open the bonnet, you know. You just put coolant in it, it can last for the whole year. Do you guys know that my, my BMW, since I bought it, I've never put in, I've never changed the oil. Oh, I changed the oil, that's for servicing, but they've not put any coolant, anything. Like, I never even opened the bonnet for like six months to one year. There's nothing that triggers me to open. But like, my car will stop. Those time my car used to stop by the roadside and I'll be so embarrassed on my eat because those time people were beginning to know me gradually you know in that space like Charlie what if somebody begin I think those times I had like probably like 8k followers to 10k something like that 10k followers you get it so I'm just thinking hey what if this is my 10k followers one of them see me and then I'm just by the roadside and I've opened my bonnet and then I'm pouring pure water in my car and I'm fanning it and like, hey, you know, be this guy, hey. you know, it's embarrassing. Literally, you cannot escape that. But I was like, always praying that nobody, none of you people, this troll, you trolls, trolls behind the computer on your phone, on your broken screen, always with sharp mouth and always ready to devour and insult and ridicule somebody. I was always praying to God that none of you see me in my broken. <laughs> and thank God, none of you. None of you saw me too. Thank God that none of you saw me. Hey, it used to be very embarrassing. It used to be very serious. I don't like to you. I'll just be stuck on the road and fanning and pouring pure water in the car. Like Jesus, let nobody see me. Eat if one of them see me. Yeah, what don't bear. Yeah, what don't bear that. But like I said, none of you. Then, then. <laughs> broken screen with borrowed data literally you know trolls with broken screen and borrowed data they can they can they can let you feel 
embarrassing and they can let you feel miserable like these people are heartless heartless trolls <laughs> internet's heartless trolls you know overheating oh overheating at a crown mall actually <laughs> this could you feel the way they talk the thing be like you see me before is it i saw you i saw you i tried calling oh master make you people come up for that <laughs> Liars. <laughs> but like like I said, I always pray that none of you. I prayed, I prayed and then and then I had like money to upgrade. I didn't upgrade, I bought a second car. I never upgraded a car, you know. Upgrade is like selling it or losing it. Or I don't know. <coughs> Maybe I can categorize it as upgrade, but I added a second car to it which is the toyota yaris and i bought toyota you know my friends were convincing me to buy other cars then i had money somewhat not a lot of money but i could buy something worth more than the toyota yaris but my friends were advising me to buy those ones worth more than and i'm like no you know because at that point in my life genuinely i, I don't have anything to flex you know i'm still living in my one bedroom rented apartments why am i going to buy like a velusta or like i don't know some mention all this median range nice cars to come and flex then after that come and park in a rented one bedroom place it didn't make sense to me financial financially you know so i did not listen to them you know i did not i just went ahead to still buy the toyota yaris why did i buy the yaris i bought a yaris because you know you, i could have bought an accord honda accord elantra i couldn't have afforded the mercedes anyway because then mercedes was still like you know very expensive you know i couldn't so i decided to just buy the yaris because like number one the the, the spare parts for yaris are very cheap you know and then it consumes less fuel and it's very efficient and i needed them to just like go up and down just do my rounds and be active and be everywhere that i needed to be you know and people were laughing at me even close friends were laughing at me you know like ah this guy is it a good bike car now now you are a car you're oh bro relax you know in life you have to always relax. Don't don't ever don't ever feel feel like you're under pressure. Right? Then I was like, it's okay with car. I have at least two. Let me upgrade my life more. I've been in this single room for a long time. Then I started working, trading, all those things. And they say anything, then you know that I came back to trading. Then I moved <coughs> to um a two-bedroom apartment then like life was beginning to really be good for me like i had worked a lot in a long time more than a year i had never even like shown off anything all those type of things and when i moved i was still really working hard this one is fast forward because i'm going to summarize it it's been long and then um and then not so long then I, then I bought the, the um, Velosta then I was like look it's okay with like literally you know living here living here thinking about when am I gonna rent when am I by then too I started really making a lot of investments you know purchasing lands putting money in treasuries buying some stocks like any little money that I had, I really started diversifying my income, income properly, solidifying my wealth and gradual, you know, preparations in life. Generally, setting up businesses, partnering with family members, which is the worst thing that you ever want to do. Never partner with any family member. They will just spend your money for free. You can arrest them. You know, <laughs> fulfilling people's promises, people that are promised to help and support and open businesses for and all those things. And then even remittances, sending money to people here and there. Like, you know, you just want to be there for everybody. You know, I did all those things. But I'm like, no, I have to like, you know, get the property for myself. You know, then 
started working, saving and everything and then I got this place. That I got this place. I think I got my Mercedes before this place, so around the same era. Then like all this time now you see that everything I'm talking about it still revolves around the same thing, literally like properties and and then and the cars literally, right? Then the last bit of it was like, okay, let me get let me get um, m I'm married. This one is like far into the future because by then I had done so much stuff, but I'm summarizing it. So at the end of the day, what I'm just trying to say is that all that I really wanted from, you know, trading as a whole is to be well grounded. It's like, at least if I don't have anything at all, I have like a house of my own. I have like a car that is like, properly functioning then i am like settled in life and as a young man settling i mean like married right these are the three things that i wanted forex to be able to do for me <coughs> then the rest are like the toppings like if i don't do anything at all in forex i bought a house from forex i bought cars from forex and I still ended up with my life partner. And then let me just, you know, do hand to mouth. The rest is like hand to mouth. It's okay. Nobody's gonna ask me for rent. Nobody's gonna ask me for any nonsense. And when I lock my door, I lock my door forever. Let me just keep paying my utility bills and, and then food, find money for food in my house. Like, what are you looking for in this life? I don't know if you understand me. Like. The other ones are like aspirations, growth, blessings, just the rest that just comes with God's own imposition on you, God's own endowment on you, you know, like traveling the world, like adding on to, adding on to more cars, adding on to more properties, like doing good, helping people. What again, like at the end of the day, what, what really again, you know? You get what I mean? So, for the person that really asks the question, which has led to this long talk, then it comes to the fact that everything that I really wanted out of Forex was to be able to have a home, and then the home comprises the property plus the wife, and then a car, right? So, so if you understand this, then, then like me, my journey, it's just quote unquote partially ended for me. Like, but, but I'm passionate at the, about the market. I just love trading. I just have so much love for the game. So, and I do it with ease. It's not like a worry. It's not like a stress. It's not like a punishment. It's not like somebody's somebody has a gun on my head like i love doing it in the comfort of my home you're a fifa bully too yes i am you know so if you follow if you follow what i'm saying then i think you understand what i mean right it's simple i don't know some i don't know what are your what are your goals what are your goals as as traders do what do you want to do you tell me maybe i'll be inspired by by yours and start adding on some stuff <coughs> but Every other thing that I'm doing is just like tennis. I always thank God. I'm grateful to God. Ah, God. At least I live in a place that I call home, that I call mine. Look, this is PSA, right? And this is not PSA. This is, um, this is like uh, PG, 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 right? PG 18. If you're below 18, you know, you have to log off before what I say. Sometimes I literally would like walk around in my house naked, literally naked. Like when I'm in, when I'm in bed and then, uh, or when I'm in the wash, uh, was the bathroom, I finish bathing and then I come out and I feel thirsty. So I just descend downstairs. Like it's my house, like bro, that's where you feel life. Like ah, this is life. Or more, trust me, you know, don't, don't, don't feel like you have reached when when you are naked in your single single room like there's no space to walk you walk in the four corners of your room one two three four <laughs> that one is not the freedom that i'm talking about 
you have to be able to descend the staircase go into the hall sit in the chair come back out go to the kitchen pick some drink and wine come back up like naked you know and be like ah god you know thank you for all you have done for me not one two three four that one that one you have to dream dream a little bit more you know but yeah <coughs> I do that that thing to just sometimes like oh I've done well for myself at least you know not so bad not so bad like I just been stand on my balcony and then look beneath and I see like my two cars I only have the two here because that's the one that can accommodate on the compound but I still have all my cars I still have like um, the Veloster <coughs> I still have the Yaris and I still have the um, the Dodge. I have all my and then I still have the uh, you know Velusta Yaris Dodge the Maserati. All of them. I never sold any of my cars. I never I just give it out. Give them out to 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 friends, you know. <laughs> Because, like, at the moment, I cannot park three cars in my house. I can only park two, so why should I, like, go and take them away from people or sell them? Like, when I sell them, they ain't gonna add anything to my account in, anyway, at the moment. So I'm like, why, why do I have to sell them? You didn't bring the Maserati, did you? No, I don't need to bring it. Like, I literally have an apartment. I literally have an apartment in Dubai, you know? The only thing that brought me back to Ghana was because I intended to, you know, it's strategic. But uh, if you want me to explain, I can explain a little bit to you guys why I came back to Ghana, right? Why I came back to Ghana, it was very strategic. Look, I can look down here. I hardly come to my balcony. I have like some chairs. I used to wind down here, you guys remember? But I, like sometimes I look down onto my cars and I'm like, oh God, thank you. This person came to block my views. You know, there was no property here, but now there's a property here. If you really used to watch. But like, I watch down, down to my cars and I'm like, God, thank you at least. You didn't, if you didn't do anything at all for me, at least you, you managed to let me get a place of my own. Look, guys, I literally have like an empty room. This room, this room, I just put like it has become like a storeroom. You know, I just dump stuff. Like there's nobody in this room. This room also has like its own washroom and everything. Nobody uses this. So once in a while, when friends or people come around, then they just come and use here to do the house stuff. But I decided not to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Who remembers the reason why why I didn't I didn't finish finish this room? Who remembers Who remembers the reason why I didn't finish this room? And you guys tell me why I didn't finish this room. And then I converted this one into my mini man cave. This is my mini man cave. When I come here, it means that I want to shoot some contents for you guys. I want to like you know just be alone. All this type of stuffs. Who remembers? Who remembers why? Why? What did I say? What was the reason why? <laughs> That's true. I did not finish the room because I didn't want anybody, you know, coming, coming to, coming to like visit me and be like oh it's late can i sleep because there's like an empty bed there there's no bed here so i tell you omo charlie i said the omo because this woman wrote omo <laughs> i just say omo i have no bed here so please start ordering your uber i beg you <laughs> so no family member has passed a night in my house that was a good one though because i don't have any bed here for you i don't have any bed here for you so where are you going to sleep? This place is just for me and my wife alone, you know? 
What was I even talking about? <laughs> but yeah. I watched down there and then. I think you guys were asking me about. You guys were asking me about like um, why why I came back. N number one is I wanted to come and set up the academy because it was part of my years my years goal. You know, like the goal that I showed you for 2023, I wrote some for 2022, right? That thing that I showed you for 2023, I wrote some for 2022, and one of one of the things in 2022 was I want to set up a, an academy, Kojo Forest Academy, where people can come in the line before the year ends. But now I was in Dubai and then I was almost changing the whole goal. I'm like, I was telling him, I was finding ways to convince my wife that, look, I don't want to just do this thing, like, you know, I don't want to, oh, it's just all oh, this academy. I don't really need it for anything, you know, but. But again, I just, the moment I remember that it was your goal, you wrote it, you meant it, you had a reason for writing it. So if if it's possible for you to achieve it, then don't deprive that goal. One thing that even motivated it was the fact that when I looked around the sub-region, I'm like, nobody really has like an academy up to like that standard that I want, you know. 